Hey, what's up, tennis fans? Did you miss me? The tennis inspector is back, and these days I'm in San Francisco. Today, I want to talk with you about mental side of tennis and how to grow champions. I'm hosting a very extravagant tennis player who competed on highest level and played against such legends as Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi. He still plays Pro Tour and runs an academy in San Jose. Please welcome JP Frutero. Three attempts. Tough. I need to give this to the next generation of kids. Legendary players. They didn't necessarily come up from a system. I would say one of them was when I played Andre Agassi. We don't have the Boris Becker making semifinals of Wimbledon. What helped Roger may not be the same as what helped Sampras. It's not the same as what helped Agassi. Billie Jean King was there. For me, this is this is what tennis is about. Good tennis players in universities, they get even worse. For me, it was very important to have education. And once you master it, you, you, you make the game look so easy. The game of tennis has slowed down a lot. Too many times, too many kids, they play tournaments too early. One of my priority right now is to finish this uh, chapter of my life as, as much and as well as I can. Where did you start playing tennis? I know that you were from Argentina originally, right? I was born in LA. Yeah. And then my parents came from Rosario, Argentina, which is the uh, same city as uh, Guillermo Coria. So all my family's there, my cousins, aunts, uncles. But yeah, I was born, born and raised in LA. My father, he was a semi-pro cyclist in Argentina. He realized that my brother was quite good. I mean, he was top 10 in Southern Cal, and he thought that if he got me started earlier, that there was a better chance to go even further with tennis. And so I didn't know better. I started three and a half years old in the front of the house you put a string with the tree and the car yeah and we're just hitting every single day who were your idols growing up uh i would say probably pete sampras yeah um you played against him right? my brother played against him okay so my brother's 10 years older sampras is eight years older than me so i kind of knew sampras when he first grew up through the juniors in southern california and uh, it was good for me, like when I played Pete Sampras, it was uh, kind of revenge a little bit, you know, because my brother didn't do so well against Pete Sampras, just yeah. like most people in the world. Actually, I got lucky. I played, played him in a sellout crowd in Orange County here in California, and Billie Jean King was there, and that was his official comeback after he made the final US Open. Crazy match. I played the last event. Uh, my team was up by one game, mm -hmm. so everything came down to this. Yeah. And I remember the crowd, you know, talking smack to me, you know, where are you from? You're in Disneyland, you know, you're dreaming, you're yeah, playing yeah, out of yeah. your mind. And this is between first and second serve. I mean, this, this had a little bit of a feel of a Davis Cup, yeah. you know, where people just, you know, ah, but I loved it, you know, whether it was yeah. for me or anyone else. For me, this is this is what tennis is about. It was, it was amazing. I got, we went to a tiebreaker, so it was four yeah. all. And uh, sudden death point, I hit a second serve ace down the two to win the match. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah. the whole place was like, you, you hear like a pin drop, you know, because people could not believe that I, I, I won, but so yeah. that was pretty fun. That was that was pretty cool. You succeeded in junior tour. I mean, you, you've been number one, right? How difficult it is to transition to the professional tour when you have this maybe pressure. This was tough, you know, for me, my family, they, you know, my father, my parents, they never went. I'm not sure they finished high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for me, it was very important to have education and uh, Try to progress a little bit. My brother really helped me with this. He's kind of the smarts in the family. I have the athleticism, and, and so he always preached to me balance. You know, to to do multiple things at a very high level. Kind of was trying to do really well school, really well tennis, and have as many options on the table as I can. You know, because mm -hmm. if you get injured, or, I mean, those these are all realities of of you don't know what's going to happen. You need to be prepared and, for uh, yeah. So a second option. Yeah. So and so then my. Uh, my mentor slash coach at the time, Jose Higueras, kind of realized my background and where I was coming from and the priorities and, and uh, you know, I had a chance to turn pro straight away at 18, but I wanted to go to university. Yeah. And at you least for one year, okay. at least for yeah. one year. And uh, so I wanted to go to good university. I wanted to, to try to turn a program around, not just like an amazing tennis program, but I wanted to see potential, go somewhere and see if I can make an impact, turn yeah. something around. But I took two fall semesters off, my junior and senior year, 
to mm-hmm. play on the tour to get my ranking up. Yeah. And then uh, as soon as I finish my fourth year playing, I turn pro. If you would do something differently, would you choose a different path, like going directly into the pro tour, skipping this step of, uh, you know, playing for university, or you think that this backup plan is very important for juniors to 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 have? I think I think it's case by case basis. You yeah, know, I think it depends on the on the kid. It depends on how mature you are, how mm-hmm. mature your body is, how prepared you are for the tour. Because the tour is tough, man. You. you, you you know, you're playing people to put food on the table. It, it, you know, people are much bigger, much stronger, much yeah. faster now, and it's not easy to break through early. You know, you don't you don't have the Boris Becker making semifinals of Wimbledon. Uh, it doesn't really happen right now. Yeah. You know, so I think people are starting to peak a little bit later. Um, the game is maturing a little bit more. Requires kind of more skills, not only physically but also mentally. You know, both for WT and ATP, you think, or. Uh, yes, but I think WTA is actually starting to come around. Like you have Coco, you know, yeah. making an amazing run. You have Kennan. You have, yeah. you have a, a young Anissimo, crop. Uh, yeah. Before this, I actually thought was the same. Very tough, you know. Yeah. Serena Williams doing really well. All the same people, but I think on the women's tour, you have more young people. But on the men's tour, still tough. It's a very big jump between juniors and pro. Yeah, and then you have kind of college that can be a, a pretty good middle middle ground yeah. to really continue to work on your game and the way I used Berkeley was I, I'm in the same place for enough time so I can really work on my body you know I was in the gym three four days a week mm-hmm. I was uh, running three four days a week I was training you know six seven days a week so I was really able to mature my body I was too skinny when okay. I was 17 18 I had a I had a big game I think I could have done something on the tour right away but I, I was very confident my body would break down. The tour is tough, you know, when you play 25, 30 weeks, it's, uh, you know, this can really beat your body up. You, you run, you, you, you work on your body, so it looks like that you've been motivated and uh, you've been de- dedicated to what you do. I've heard a lot of stories that good tennis players in universities, they get w- even worse. Yeah, th- this is really, really important. I mean, th- just like anything, you know, if you take things the wrong way or if you're not disciplined enough, I mean, college is fun, right? Yeah. You have parties, you have you know, the team and you know, scholarships. And, you know, you have a lot of uh, excuses to get yourself in trouble and maybe lose motivation. And I had a lot of pressure, you know, I went to Berkeley. I was the best recruit ever to sign with the junior ranking. This was tough for me. So not mm-hmm. only just the distractions of parties in this, but also the pressure that I had from the coaches, the program to turn something around. But yeah. I mean, I signed up for this, right? Yeah. This is something that I really wanted to go for. but. You don't know until you go. I actually think through this process, I was really bad when I first started. Mm-hmm. You know, I was two and six at number one. Coach pro- demoted me to number two. Yeah. I went seven and one. I lost to the, you know, Stanford number number two player who was number six in the country, uh, six four in the third set. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then he promoted me back to one. And I think I finished the third highest freshman in the country. I beat you know two oh, Americans. So this process of like hitting rock bottom and then find a way out, mm-hmm. really kind of boosted my game, boosted my my mental toughness yeah. and uh, my maturity that I think really helped me when I go on the tour to really figure out the challenges. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know that you have a lot of crazy stories from tour, so maybe you can share a couple of them. I would say one of them was when I played Andre Agassi in uh, Philadelphia. Played World Team Tennis for the Freedoms, where Billie Jean King's the right. This was when Agassi made the finals, yeah. the last final run at US Open. And so I played him in a sellout crowd in uh, in Philadelphia, and I had people fly in, my friends from California, and, and the, the energy was just, it was just crazy. Yeah. It's, it's hard to explain. It's kind of like when you go into a place and you can kind of just feel the aura, you know? And I could, that's something that Andre Agassi I always believed he was one of the best entertainers of all time, at least yeah. in tennis. And I was able to experience firsthand what what that meant and, and what he brings to the game and, and why people get so excited for him. Mm-hmm. You know, very similar to Roger Federer, right? Yeah. Everywhere he goes, everyone wants to see him and he has an aura about him. So I experienced this firsthand and just playing with him brought out the best in me and, you know, I didn't didn't go super well for me but our match point was point of the year for world team tennis and the whole place just went i'm gonna put it in this video I think bananas I yeah. so 
that, I mean, that, that for me, if I can just think of tennis and what I would love it to, to, to be and become is for everyone. It's, yeah. it's, it's an amazing event, it's entertainment, it's exciting, it's fun, and people get, get excited for it, you know? You played against such stars like Agassi, Sampras, but what do you think di differentiate them from other players? How they keep the same level? I think at the highest level in, in all sports and really all walks of life, you know, when someone masters their craft, you know, like a Sampras, like a Agassi, Roger Federer, you know, Rafa Nadal, you, you start operating at a different level than most people. Yeah. You know, and, and, and your floor is just higher than most people, you know. Right. So and once you master it, you, you, you make the game look so easy and that's mentally and physically that you know, many times when you walk on the court, it's it's as if you've already lost against these guys, you know, because they're so tough and so mentally tough and so physically tough and they know how to control the game. Giveaway time. Guys, I have this nice uh, Novak Djokovic hat, uh, which is a product of uh, Lacoste. And uh, if you want to win this, please comment under this video below who do you think is going to be the next Nito ATP uh, finals champion. The tournament is going to be held between 15th November until 22nd of November, so you have quite a bit of time. And uh, yeah, who gonna provide the most accurate prediction under this video, gonna receive this hat. Good luck and uh, hopefully you're gonna watch uh, Nito ATP finals because there are a lot of new faces, so I'm very excited about it and uh, it's gonna be very interesting. Subscribe and summed up. And now, get back to JP Frutero. Do you think you cannot succeed in tennis without talent? No, you have to have talent. You need to have some baseline of talent because the problem with tennis, it's not a problem, but it's the game's evolving where, you know, guys are bigger, stronger, faster. Right. For men and women. And you cannot have holes. You have, if you have too big of a hole, then, then you cannot get there. Yeah. Right? And for me, you know, the, the game of tennis has slowed down a lot. Mm -hmm. Like 20 years ago when I first came on tour, you can serve volley. Yeah. You know, Tim Henman, Ivan Isevich, Richard Krejcik. And then there was a there was a point in time where the, you know, the fans, they wanted longer points. Yeah. So they slowed everything down. The surfaces, the balls got, right. you know, more thicker. You, you have, to, you cannot have any holes anymore because points are longer. Yeah. So you get exposed more. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you, you have to, you know, you have to be solid and you have to have weapons. How do you think it is possible to recognize if a kid have talent? I think you look at the way they move. You look at the way they respond to you yeah. as a student. Yeah. You know, sometimes you have certain students that you literally say something and they do it. Yeah. There's no second guessing. And you see the improvement day to day. You can see this, right? If yeah. you have someone that is really hungry or someone that's very passionate about the sport, then that's that's a cue for you to say, okay, this kid has an ability to really accelerate the learning process that's here that everyone else is here. Yeah. You're gonna say, okay, this kid has a chance. You know, you don't know because <laughs> some kids can burn out, some yeah. kids could get injured. Of course, yeah. But but when you see a learning curve like this and you see a kid really hungry and they compete and the, the effort's there. Dealing with stress and being nervous, which is natural, obviously. And uh, when you start playing pro tour with those strong older guys, it's difficult. What's your approach dealing with stress? I think every level is different, you know. Uh, at, at least for me as a coach, mm -hmm. for the kids, my main focus is, is developing someone's game and looking for weapons, yeah. looking for for a foundation so that before they play tournaments, I want them to have something to work with and yeah. something to get better at. I think uh, too many times, too many kids, they play tournaments too early with not much foundation. Mm -hmm. And they, they start losing, they deal with stress, they, they start freaking out on the court. Yeah. And uh, so I, I like developing more, clean their game more. And then whenever they feel ready or whenever they play tournaments, but I'm not, I don't really want to encourage them so much so early. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the Williams sisters, you yeah. know, the father didn't put them in tournaments, very few, you know, and yeah. just develop the game, develop the game, develop the game. And for me, I think that's a constant. I think mentally you can feel a lot more comfortable if you feel like you have game mm -hmm. and you really enjoy the way you play. Yeah. You know, and if, if you're struggling and you don't have too much game and then when you lose, it can, it can mess with your head.
Now you run an academy, right? And you also play some doubles tournaments. Yeah, no, so I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit of uh, everything, but yeah. you know, now I'm not only just playing for myself, it's, it's, I, I do it for the kids, and they encourage me to play. They, you know, the parents want me to keep playing because they feel like my level's still there. Yeah. And I still enjoy it. You know, for me, if, if I can still keep getting better, and, and I think through my coaching and through studying the game, I just see things better. And so I enjoy that part. I feel like I can slow the game down more. I can see plays happen more. Yeah. And I can stay relevant that way. You yeah. know, and I'm evolving my game. I'm working on different shots, like the tweener volley, or just whatever yeah, yeah, it yeah. is for me. It, like that's that's what keeps me hungry. Is I can keep getting better, mm -hmm. and I can keep having fun, and I can practice what I preach. And I think it has more more power that way. Yeah. You know? My, my priority right now is to finish this uh, chapter of my life as, as much and as well as I can. Yeah. And something inside will tell me it's time to move on, but uh, not now. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I still am very excited. I'm working on my game and, and uh, I'm still playing a very high level. It's yeah. one thing if I'm playing on the tour and you know people killing me, then, yeah, then yeah. I need to pack my bags and go home and, and you know maybe work on my, my work on my academy. Yeah. But, but, you, but you still feel enough power to compete on this level, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you are 39 now. 39. Yeah. That's, that's but nice. I feel 21 inside. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We all feel the, the exactly. same. Your approach of teaching kids, I know that's a broad topic, but growing a champion, what is it like? <laughs> this is tough. Yeah. You know, for me, for me, it's case by case basis on the kid. Yeah. You know, and, and some of it's the background, you know, how they grew up. Mm -hmm. Culture. Asian culture is very different from European culture. Right. Very different from American culture. And I think there's there's a lot of factors, you know, it's the parents, it's the people around them, you know, what what kind of atmosphere are they in? Yeah. And then you need to figure out how to bring out the best in that kid. Yeah. You know, because what what, what helped Roger may not be the same as what helped Sampras is not the same as what helped Agassi, you know. Yeah. And if you, you think about all of these, you know, legendary players, they didn't necessarily come up from a system. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Agassi was his father. Serena, oh, the Williams sisters, his father. Yeah. Uh, I can keep going. You know, Roger is has yeah, his own better. coach. Systems can create very good players, mm -hmm. but but when you're talking about the best, they they come from their own kind of niche. Yeah. You know. And, Specifically and in tennis, I think. I agree. Because this is an individual sport it's and an individual uh, sport. You're, it's an entrepreneurial sport, meaning. Yeah. You don't have coaches on the court. You need to figure this out. Right which is a crazy challenge to ask a kid 10 years old to figure it out on themselves. Some advice or recommendation to young kids on uh, how they should approach their careers, how they should deal with losses. I think you really want to mix the different levels to, to keep a kid hungry, to play some higher levels. You need to, you need to you know, grow a kid to, to deal with pressure of winning, yeah. to be the favorite. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of going up and down the, the levels to, to figure out what the kid has and then continue to grow the game accordingly. You know, yeah. you got to play the bigger tournaments to figure out what they need to keep working on. You got to play the tournaments at the same level to learn how to compete. You got to play the tournaments where you're the favorite to feel the pressure of, okay, I'm the number one seed or I'm the top dog. How do I deal with that? Yeah. You know? Tennis, how would develop your personality? Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I give a lot to tennis. And I, and I think part of it is just the tennis was the the vehicle that allowed me to travel the world and and see things that you know most people don't get a chance to yeah. you know I'm, I'm at like around 57 58 countries playing tennis like I, that's a privilege to me you know that's not something that you can go to a store and, and buy this experience you know and so these are life experiences i've developed life relationships friends all over the place supporters all over the place so to me, this is a, it's a kind of a blessing, and, and I feel the, the the duty and the responsibility that I need to give this to the next generation of kids. Yeah, you know, and not just be a tennis coach, but kind of be a life coach, life coach and, yeah. and kind of a peer or whatever it is. But but I have to give this experiences so that they don't necessarily have to go through what I went through, and I can kind of help them progress. You know? Yeah. My last question is, uh, what does tennis mean to you? That's a loaded question. Um, yeah, 
it's a, it's a pretty cool sport that I feel like brings out the entrepreneur in you. <laughs>